Okay, so I've done a few videos on remote desktop on Raspberry Pi with iPads, uh, MacBooks, Windows computers, Android devices, but all of those have been local, uh, like it is on my M1 Mac here. This is on the same network, so it's pretty easy to set up. And for quite some time, I've been meaning to do a remote access video, uh, but when I'm not at home. So my thought was, if I could leave a Pi just plugged in and switched on, running Raspberry Pi OS, and I could just access that from anywhere I am. Mainly from my phone, if there's a few little things I want to look up, maybe notes I want to take, maybe some files I need that are on my home network that I want to uh, access when I'm somewhere else. Uh, so... I looked through loads of guides, loads of videos, and uh, I, th I still think this one is probably the easiest for how to get it set up on a Raspberry Pi. But then after that, a lot of it depends on your router. So this is my router. Uh, it's from Vodafone, so the company I get my broadband through. And it's a really good router, really good Wi-Fi on it, but people have struggled with port access, which is what you need uh, to be able to access your Pi from another location. And you can see here, there's a tutorial, uh, quite an old tutorial, 2015, but the, the bit about the router, I think, explains it pretty much as well as I've seen it. Uh, and that's the one I used to be able to access my router. And actually the port access bit is only a small part of it, but obviously if you struggle with it, it can take some time. So hopefully your router is much easier than mine and, uh, and you'll be up and running. So my Pi is in an aluminium case and this is one of the DeSalvo cases so it keeps it lovely and cool. But as you can see, I've only got a power cable into it. I don't need anything else in any of the ports. That is as it is. And I'm gonna obviously tuck it behind the TV. It doesn't need to be out on the front there. Although the DeSalvo case does look very nice. So I'm going to access it first of all on my Mac, just because it's got a mouse and keyboard, so it makes it easier than the iPad or the phone. So if I call up the remote desktop app, uh, which is the same app as you use on the iPad, the iPhone, on Android and Windows, uh, they all work very well. Uh, the top two here are local networks, and this is the one that accesses it via the internet, so when I'm out of the house. So if I double click on that, you can see it asks for the username and password, and I will be changing this. Uh, so a nice short one for the moment there you go and that's how it starts up and then I have access to my Pi so you can see I'm moving the mouse around uh, so if I want to access the terminal so say for instance I wanted to do something like uh, NeoFetch just to show uh, what it was running so it's not overclocked at the moment it's running at 1.5 gigahertz it's been running for an hour and 40 minutes and you can see down the bottom here the temperature is 35, 36 degrees. It hasn't been doing anything intensive and it won't be really. It will just be to access files, uh, maybe access the full desktop browser uh, when I'm on my phone. But just various little things. Uh, I'm going to try it out and see how I get on with it. But what I thought as well is because it's not going to be used for anything particularly intensive, it was probably a good idea to... Uh, underclock the machine. So if I go into sudo nano boot config.txt and we have a look in here, uh, I've put some overclocking and uh, underclocking settings in here and I've done this in previous videos uh, basically to save power but in this case it will mean it will run cooler. So over voltage equals minus four uh, and arm frequency equals a thousand. That's settings I've used before on the Pi 4 They've worked fine, uh, haven't had any issues with them. I could possibly go even lower because I've got nothing plugged into any of the ports. I'm using a standard Raspberry Pi power supply to it. Uh, but let's save that. So Control X and yes. And then enter to save that. And obviously I can do all my updating and everything like that from here. I can access Raspberry Pi config. Uh, and mess about with any of the settings in there. Um, but let's reboot that to apply those settings. So you can see, because it's rebooted, it's it's quit out on here. So I need to wait for that to restart, and I need to wait for it not very long, because it doesn't seem to, on the Pi, if I plug a display in, it doesn't come up with the desktop interface. Uh, so it comes up as terminal. And obviously I can change that, but there's no real reason to change that, because if I try and log in here, obviously it was a bit soon. I'll put my password in. And we're back in after a reboot. So now if I have a look at NeoFetch and see what we've got. Yeah, one gigahertz and 
Temperature's about the same at the moment. I guess if I leave it for a while, uh, hopefully we'll get a slightly lower temperature than that. But just to show the general performance at home on my Wi-Fi, um, you can see the signal of the Pi uh, in the case. It's in the same room with the router, so there's no problem there. So if I just do BBC Sport, so here I am accessing the BBC Sport website. Obviously it's not as smooth as it natively is on the Mac because uh, it is a remote desktop, but it's showing a full desktop interface, which is exactly what I wanted uh, and to be able to use it from another device like my phone. Right, so I think probably I'm gonna go out in the car. I've just bought a new dash cam, so I'll put some dash cam footage on there. And let's use the Pi at home from a remote location. Welcome back to Song Quiz. Choose a pop music decade. 80s. Your opponent is George from New York. Question one, for 10 points. Name the song title and artist. Your score is 40 and George's score is 20. Question six, for 20 points. Your score is 170 and George's score is 60. Well, I bet that the neighbors are just loving this. You won. Wow. You've won five games in a row. Okay, so I've got my iPad in the car, just switch over to screen capture. Okay, so I'm tethered to my phone, so let's open the remote desktop app. Okay, you can see it's loaded up. Uh, let's just click on this one and uh, see if we can change the page to something else. So let's call up the keyboard, Hot UK Deals, Return. I see it's slow because I'm typing it out and it's not come up on the, ah, there you go, it's coming up now. Maybe I need to go somewhere with a better network connection. Uh, it seems to be alright 4G here, but it's still quite slow. Oh, there you go. So that page has come up, so I can click on the link. Oh yeah, it seems to be working a bit better now. Um, with the keyboard, uh, you've got a Windows key, uh, which can call up the uh, ordinary apps, but also you've got uh, your F1 keys and all the extras like Escape, Shift, Control, Tab, so it all seems to be working. You can see the mouse pointer moves nice and smooth on the screen. Uh, and if I was to click on a link, here we go, like iTunes. And then it's loading it up on my Pi at home. Okay, so now my M1 Mac in the car. Okay, so scrolling of a page is pretty slow, uh, but it's working. Uh, so let's call up some of the programs. So say System Tools and Gparted. Yeah, that seems to be working all right. And then what accessories have we got? So something like Raspberry Pi Imager. Certainly the mouse moves all right around, but I guess the mouse that's handled on the Mac. Choose OS. So if I had if I had media in there, I could flash an operating system. I could also uh, obviously download an operating system that I, uh, when I'm out and about and uh, a new operating system comes out, I can look it up uh, on here. So if I was looking at say something like Arcade Punks, let's see how it handles that website. Uh, and I can go, yeah, it's definitely quicker on my Mac. Um, and again, this is tethered to my phone. Uh, whether it's just a slightly better connection now. In fact, my phone's on the seat now. Uh, I did have it up on the dashboard, which I thought would have been better. But uh, yeah, so if I had uh, some extra storage in here, when I'm out and about, uh, or I'm on my lunch at work, and I see there's a new ROM image, or a new operating system I want to download, uh, I could download it to that storage, or I could probably download it to my NAS drive. So if I, uh, let's call up my NAS drive. Uh, so go and network and if I needed any documents or any details or anything from my NAS drive I can double click on that and uh, and that will come up and allow me to say for instance get a ROM that's on my NAS drive uh, or any document or any information or anything like that and hit connect and I suppose I could access uh, any of these files and upload them to something like Dropbox and then access it on my phone or any other device I'm at, but it does give me access to the whole of my NAS drive. Yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Anyway, I hope all this helps. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the Amazon Song Quiz, 
uh, which I was playing just now. It's a free app to play on the Alexa app on an iPhone. I've got another video about it where I tried it out uh, because I dock my iPhone on my dashboard. So if you want to know how that's done, I'll put a link in the description to the video. But I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.